Do you feel like everything you went through in your childhood influenced your journey to becoming an entrepreneur in any way? I do. Absolutely. I think if I had an easy childhood, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. If I didn't see some of the good and the bad growing up, I wouldn't be able to weather the storm that you need to do when you're running a business, building a business. There's a lot of obstacles. Everybody can celebrate the wins and the awards, but there's a lot of losses that lead to that. And I would have been prepared for any of that had I not grown up the way I grew up. And people think like, yes, it was abusive. And yes, we lived in a trail park. Yes, we didn't have a lot of money, but my parents were still loving. They just had a lot of problems and as, as do most people. And so, you know, I saw my dad struggle, blue collar, working multiple jobs. My mom working third shift, decorating cakes. I'm helping my dad deliver newspapers and we were struggling. And I saw him miss out when the unicorn came by. He didn't jump on it. He played it safe, right? He didn't play it to, he was scared to lose. And I just told myself as I got older, I was going to play to win. I wasn't going to play prevent. I wasn't going to play to not lose. I was going to play to win and I was going to take risks and I was going to, you know, put myself out there and, and, and try things and not be scared to fail where I think he was a lot more conservative and played everything safe. Yeah. Isn't that so interesting how, of course, we want to have great opportunities for our kids. We want them to have a wonderful childhood, but sometimes, you know, going through these challenges, actually a lot of times are what gives us the strength to carry on. And, you know, I love what you say, you know, uh, and this is something that, um, that we say all the time with our clients, like, are you playing to win or are you playing not to lose? And it's a different mindset. I mean, you really have to ask yourself that, you know, if it, it's not supposed to be comfortable, it's not supposed to be easy. You know, we, we're going through that transition right now in our business where sometimes when you continue to win and things are successful, you forget to pay attention to what's going on in front of you all the time. And so then you start to have different barricades that pop up and different obstacles you have to overcome because you get too comfortable and you have to learn to be uncomfortable and be okay with it and continue to treat a win just like you would a loss and continue to dissect. Look at, I think of Bill Belichick with the Patriots. They're winning all these games. He still was screaming and shouting at players, even though they blew someone out 42 to seven, because he was finding something to get better at. And I think that myself included, there's been times where I've been asleep at the wheel and I go, Oh, I should have paid more attention to that. We're too busy celebrating a win. So I try to limit the celebration to real quick and treat every day like a playoff game. Yeah, you know, in the um, movie with Will Smith, King Richard, that's the story of Venus. Great and movie. Serena. Oh, my gosh. That father. Wow. Where yes. he was like, I don't want you celebrating these wins. Like, you've got to stay humble, you know? You have to. And so, so incredibly powerful. Now, you started from the ground up. You grew up with little money, like you said. Not really any professional guidance as far as business goes. Um, as someone with no experience, what were the first steps when you started your first company? It was, you were in the alarm business. That's correct. I had jobs I wasn't supposed to have because I was a great salesperson, but I didn't have the education or the experience, but I was able to sell myself into the job because I could interview very well. And I would, hey, take a chance on me. You're going to win. Bet on me. Like I would say all those things where I was a little different than everybody else. And I was very successful at sales, multiple companies, AT&T, Verizon Wireless, when it was Bell Atlantic doing business to business sales. But I was struggling because of my education. And because of my age, I couldn't get promoted. So I couldn't see the path forward. I would right. be crushing it and I would be training people who had more education than me that were older than me. They couldn't outperform me. They couldn't outwork me, yet they're getting promoted. That was frustrating. And I felt handcuffed. And I said, I have to, I have to do my own thing. Like I, I can't do this anymore. And so I reached out to a buddy of mine. He's now my business partner. And I said, like, you know, hey, what are you doing? And we both in high school sold home security over the phone part time, right? Where we were calling people who registered to win a Durango. And we'd be like, hey, Allison, do you remember being at the mall and signing up to win a Durango? Yeah. Well, great news. You're still in the running for that. But do you hear this? You've actually won a free alarm system with blah, 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 blah. Monitoring's a dollar a day. That's what we did at like 17 years old in high school. And wow. we crushed it. And so 
he started a small alarm company out of his house in Arizona. And I was in North Carolina and I'm like, well, if you ever want to come out South, I want to do my own thing. We could do that. So he's like, yeah, let's do that. So he was supposed to have all this money when we started. I had to get licensed in North Carolina. It took me seven months to get licensed here. She had to get a low voltage license. And I didn't, I mean, I'm not even good with my hands. I'm a salesperson. So here I am having to learn electrical and take tests. And I finally get my license and I reach out to him like, Hey, I'm ready to go. And he's like, Oh dude, I ain't got the money. I'm like what? What? Now I'm still working at Verizon. I'm like, this isn't going to work. So I cash out my 401k, which wasn't a lot. It was like 10 grand. And I started the business and, you know, really without him and it just exploded. And I didn't talk to him for about four or five years. Uh, he kind of went to go do real estate, shut his business down. He was struggling. And four or five years later, he came to work for me and I was, we were exploding. I left Verizon, you know, a few months after running the business. And I hired him in and, and treated him like a partner and let him help build the business. And we did that. And, you know, we built van teams like canvas teams. You know, we started door knocking and then we eventually evolved to call centers and we had call centers in Pakistan and we had call centers in the U S and in China that would do telemarketing. So we were learning all of this as we were going. And there were a lot of bumps learning. Like, what do you mean telemarketing? How does avatar work? All these things that if you don't right. trial and, and error and you don't struggle and you don't jump in to find out what it's about, you don't know. And so we were going down different avenues to scale the business. And then we partnered with another company called Power Home Technologies. We kind of merged the two. And then we were a powerhouse. And I really wanted to get into solar. I, I felt like I wanted something that was more meaningful than alarms. And there's nothing wrong with alarms. I loved what I did. I felt like we were protecting families and lives. People slept better at night. I loved that. But everybody was doing it. And I wanted to be more impactful, something that was life changing to change the world. And I saw these solar companies in the West Coast really taken off. And I'm like, why aren't we doing that here? Why don't we get involved and save that here? In a neighborhood I lived in over here in the point in North Carolina, they had a lot of coal ash and a lot of, they have a cancer cluster and coal ash is basically the coal being burned for the power. It's the ash after that. And for them, they put it in an ash basin full of water. And most of those basins are unlined in the U S. So what happens is this radioactive arsenic coal ash that's in the water gets into the groundwater and people are drinking it. They're oh bathing God. in it. They're showering in it. We lived in a neighborhood like that, a really nice, nice, expensive Trump neighborhood that was just very nice on the lake where people are getting sick and people are getting cancer. And it is just bad. Uh, my daughter's 23 years old right now. She has five friends she's lost from brain tumors or cancer. She's 23. Oh I'm like, I don't even God. have five friends. I'm 42 that have died of stuff like that. So there was a problem. We moved off there. When we lived there, my, my wife had dark circles underneath her eyes and a pick line. My son had dark circles. Like something was wrong. Nobody could figure it wow. out. So we moved, things got better. And I knew this was during, I was starting the uh, solar business and leaving the security business. I knew that I had a bigger purpose than just building a solar business, but it was really impacting and forcing the utility companies not to do what they did. And so we continue to scale the business and we fight for that. I mean, we fight for, you know, not only energy independence, but a cleaner planet. And I didn't get into the business thinking that, but along the ride, I figured out, wow, this is so much bigger. And the, you know, with electric cars here and everything, battery and storage, and, you know, we don't have to depend on these countries for gas all the like There's so many things the right way to get into renewable energy that it was just the best move that I could do. And when you love something and you believe in something, it's easy to do, you know, to be really successful at it. Yeah. Wow. That is a beautiful story. I mean, not the obviously what you went through and the cancer and all that is just sickening. You know, yeah. we just got solar on our house. I'm in San Diego in California uh, about six months ago. And I'm so excited about yeah. it. You know, I went to Israel it was in the nineties and they had solar at the time, early nineties, yeah. you know, and we're catching, you know, finally here in the United States, catching up with that. I mean, it's just, we need to do it for the planet. So we have to, it, yeah. and look, I, I was the first one that, that, you know, people, did you get into solar to save the planet? No, I mean, I, I believe in it. I believe, you know, but it was because of energy independence, but then it has changed to, we have to save the planet. Like we have to, and the power outages are crazy. 